All right, guys, I think we've we've given it enough time for people to um, to join this meeting. Thanks for everybody who took the time to, to join us for this meeting. Um, I hope you have a fantastic 2021. We're almost the third in, so so that, that went quickly. Um, so today's webinar is all about uh, mechanical products of ANSYS. Now, just as an introduction to the people who uh, who don't know us yet, um, we are QFinsoft, and uh, we will uh, we are the ANSYS resellers uh, for South Africa. Uh, we've been supporting and, and reselling this product now for more than 20 years. Uh, we've got a great customer base, and we thank all of those guys on this call for supporting us. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to the next next 20 years. Right, so I'll get started. Um, for today, we I'm going to do introduction very quickly. Uh, the real presentations will be done by John Riff and Turner and by Jesse Quick, and that will all be about um, as this mechanical features for the South African uh, industry. Now, we've taken we've taken basically the what's new presentations from ANSYS 2021 release one. And we condense that into a form that's presentable because it's um, it's really many many slides. I think Jesse can tell me later exactly how many slides is in there, but it's, it's more than 300 slides. All right, I just quickly want to do some some introduction to to those that's new to this webinar. Um, so Ansys has been has been one of the the, 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 the market leading uh, simulation providers over over many years. And um, they, they've acquired many physics, there's many different products available in the ANSYS platform and in the Workbench platform. I will be focusing today on, um, on just the, the, the structures, structural side of things, but for those who are interested, there are some solutions available for fluids, electromagnetics, semiconductors, and then embedded software um, and optical. There's also Granta, uh, material information, solutions that will help you with advanced materials so if you have any questions about these please feel free to drop something in the chat um, all right the structures product family will focus on ANSYS mechanical today a bit of um of explicit um there's some other options available as well uh ANSYS recently acquired alice diner um and and they also acquired autodyne so i think we've got leading explicit codes in this industry um, and then INCO, this fatigue, uh, there's a partnership uh, with ANSYS, and then we've got a partnership with ANSYS Motion for advanced rigid body dynamic simulation in the automotive industry. And then Sherlock is a product that you can do some mechanical or structural integrity with um, electronic PCB design. Uh, so it goes, it's a very broad uh, spectrum of things that we will be able to do. I just quickly want to say something about um, the mechanical packaging. So there's, there's basically three mechanical package, uh, package or licensing levels available. The mechanical pro is your typical static structural. Um, it includes full uh, transient thermal. I'll, I'll say a little bit more now. And the mechanical premium is like non-linear, and it includes all the static structural. And the mechanical enterprise includes all the advanced products and explicit solvers and some hydrodynamic solvers. Um, and space claim licenses. I'll show you a little bit more about that in the next one. I think there are a couple of the big advantages in, in, in ANSYS that, that we've seen from our customer base is that, so ANSYS is CAD agnostic, so we don't really care where the CAD is coming from, but there, there, there are geometry in, uh, interfaces available for each major CAD system. Um, and we've got ANSYS space claim, which is our own CAD that we use to prepare geometry. Um, and that CAD is connected. And we work on a model-based level. Um, you can still work on elements like uh, like back in the old days. Um, it's all geometry-driven, which is which is giving a great advantage when the geometry updates. Then the simulation um, boundary conditions will also update together with that. It makes it a bit more optimal. It's all parametric. Uh, the user interface is really uh, easy to learn. We've got a wonderful interface, especially. Um, with this new release, um, and then ANSYS has always been known as the best in class for structural uh, analysis tools, uh, fluids, etc. Just a quick overview on the three levels. So, Mechanical Pro, 
will include all the static structural functionality. There's full thermal analysis in, included in, in there, full modal analysis, full and full contact. Uh, there's non-linear non geometry and material plasticity, and you also get the polygy optimization. All of these licenses runs on four HPC cores, so that means you can you can solve your simulations in four cores without requiring any additional licensing. Uh, the mechanical adds um, adds then non-linear geometry, material plasticity, and the poly uh, to the to the license, and then full linear dynamics, element birth and death. Um, and then lastly, mechanical enterprise will add uh, full material non-linearity, coupled field elements, user materials, um, all of the other explicit tools. I'll show you a little, a little bit here. Uh, so with the mechanical pro, the fatigue model and design explorer is included. And as you move up this chain, uh, the functionality just gets more. Uh, the mechanical premium includes a rigid body dynamic solver. Uh, and then the same with fatigue model and design explorer. And mechanical enterprise then includes explicit dynamics and this composite prep post, that's the ACP. This is a tool where you can uh, you, you can model the, the, the layouts of composite uh, designs um, for fancy shapes. Uh, it's, a, it's a very user-friendly preprocessor uh, to, to set up these problems in, in uh, ANSYS. And then Aqua is a hydrodynamic solver. Uh, space claim license is included in that license, um, and then you get the, the customization toolkit, rigid body dynamics, and the rest, um, just like in the other license levels. That's it from my side for now. Um, I think I'm going to hand over to Jean-Ri first. But just just one quick admin thing quickly. Um, we will we will handle the questions in the comments section. And we will also have a Q&A session at the end of these two presentations. So thanks for joining. I hope you enjoy it. Any questions, let us know. John, are you ready? Yes, it's like I'm ready. Cool. Thanks, Jules. Okay, thanks, Isaac, um, for the introduction. Um, my name is Jean-Ri, and uh, let me share my screen quickly. Um, today, myself and Jesse will be taking you through um, some of the latest updates to to ANSYS um, Mechanical. Uh, let me just see here, where is my screen? Um, okay, there we go. Just want to confirm if everyone can see. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, on the agenda for today, um, I'll be taking you through some of the general updates, um, some of the interface enhancements that have been made, um, and I'll be ending up with the materials, and then JC will be taking over from composites all the way down to multi-body dynamics. Okay, so just from my side, um, from the general update side, the one nice feature that has been added is that you can actually now manage your application options straight from the mechanical application. Um, it's not interfaced with Workbench anymore. So previously, as I understand it, you um, had to do these kind of um, license operations within the Anslick admin utility. So now it's a lot easier to just um, quickly do those same operations within the mechanical application. Okay, so that's quite nice. Um, saves a bit of time. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Um, getting to the mechanical interface, um, the features that we thought were quite um, nice and very useful. They, they're quite simple features that have been added, but quite powerful. So one of them is the ability to track your solution history. So this actually just allows you to um, compare the results from your computed solution. Um, not everyone can always remember exactly what changes they made to the model um, and exactly what results you then got from that. So this actually just shows you um, not only the results from the models, but also the um, results. Okay, so I've covered the updates to the licensing, um, and I was talking about the, yes, the solution history tracking. So 
Um, now that you can actually see <laughs> um, how useful it is. So as I was saying, you can track the results obtained from different computer solutions as well as the gathered statistics on the performance of the solver. So from that, you can actually um, yeah, gather a lot of information from your previous models. OK, um, so another really cool feature that has been added to the interface is the ability to now scope your boundary conditions and your loads to uh, finite element bodies directly. So you can actually create named selections from nodes or element faces or elements and then um, apply your your loads as listed here to, to those named selections. So these are all the boundary conditions and loads that are supported for now. And I'm sure ANSYS will be um, developing even more boundary conditions for this. So this just makes it a lot easier um, in terms of not being so reliant on your geometry. Um, you can just use your mesh for, for the loading itself. OK, so um, this brings us to the new cable 280 element that has been introduced by ANSYS Mechanical. Um, it is replacing the previous link 180 element, um, which is just they they improved the the solution accuracy and the robustness, um, and it is a quadratic element. So, um, yeah, it will just if your cable-like structures, especially in tension, um, is just more robust in that sense. So, it's definitely the preferred method from now on for any cable-like structures, um, and you can just simply do that by changing your model type to cable in your line body settings under geometry. So it's quite easy to, to just change that. Um, OK, so performance wise, um, with the focus <coughs> of the release being faster performance, less memory usage and smaller file sizes, um, the people at ANSYS have made quite significant improvements, um, especially with regards to importing external models. Um, they have changed some of the scripting to um, actually just, it's, it's, it uses less memory. So in essence, it, it will um, result in smaller result files and it actually just runs a lot faster. So, um, yeah, so in the past, I think it was optimized for compressed numbering, um, especially for the MABDL users, but from now on, um, it's not actually necessary to use that anymore. So, yeah. Okay, then um, in terms of the solver, the PCG solver, which is the more efficient solver, um, can sometimes result in some convergence issues. And a nice thing that they have now added is that uh, when the PCG solver fails to converge, the mechanical application will automatically switch over to the SPA solver without you having to intervene at all. Um, so that just makes it a lot easier um, when you're having convergence issues and not understanding exactly why or where it is coming from. So that is quite nice as well. Um, okay, then they've also added some additional support for the joint elements. Um, they, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, they've added support specifically for the Revolut, Universal, Weld, and General joints. Um, and unfortunately, the other joint element types will still require the use of the sparse solver. But um, that's already a significant improvement as well. Then, in terms of the GPU acceleration enhancements, um, <coughs> and recently upgraded from the Volta cards to the Ampere cards, um, and they've upgraded to the CUDA 11. So this just then requires the GPU driver update um, from the client side. So what this in essence does is it actually enhances the matrix factorization significantly um, while it is solving. So what you see on the left here is actually the um, relative speed up caused by this GPU. Sure. Um, but in terms of the the bigger picture or the entire simulation, you'll see it's a bit smaller. And this is because the entire simulation includes some of non-GPU aspects, but um, I still think it's worth um, exploring at this stage um, due to the re relative speed up that we are actually getting. So 
um, yeah. Okay, in terms of the external models and external data, so ANSYS is aware that they don't live in a bubble, so they obviously cater for the necessary interfaces. Um, one thing that is specifically now supported for harmonic acoustics analysis is um, that you can import a CFD pressure load directly from Fluent as a CGNS file and then um, apply that as a pressure within mechanical. So that is nice. Um, then something more applicable to electronics reliability is they have also included a new interpolation method that allows you to specify orthotropic conductivity. Um, previously it was only isotropic, so um, this will now render more accurate and more reliable results. So you can, as you can see here, change the interpolation method to directional and then specify your thermal conductivity in the X, Y and the Z direction independently. Okay, so this is also quite nice, as I mentioned, with electronics reliability that JC will cover very briefly a bit later on. Um, cool. Okay, then the imported element orientations is something that I found really cool. So this ties in with the short fiber workflow that Jesse will also be discussing a bit later. But um, in essence, you can import and then map your element orientations from external data. And then this can be used in conjunction with your orientation dependent materials. So Jesse will be giving some more information on how this can be useful a bit later with the short fiber workflow. Right, then previously the ability to map imported convection loads, um, it was only able to do that to the element faces, but now the corner, corner nodes are also supported. So this will give you a smoother profile for your imported convection um, and then giving you more reliable results as a result of that. Okay. Um, another nice, simple, but very powerful feature that they've added is they have added this external data component um, that you can reference from your projects. So this will allow you to um, specify your external data by reference and still um, be able to archive that as part of your project. So this was previously not supported, um, but they have now included that. So it's also quite nice. Okay, then They've made some enhancements to the external study importer, um, especially from Creo Discovery of Fusion. So this will just facilitate you into importing um, the specific features listed on this slide into mechanical um, without having to do lengthy um, mapping of that. So that's also quite useful, um, especially for the PTC and Autodesk fusion studies. All right. Um, okay, then from the material side, which is the last section that I'll be covering for today, um, it's quite exciting developments that have been made on the material front. Uh, a simple feature that they've added is that you can, from the mechanical application, now compare materials um, directly. So this is very useful. Um, you don't actually have to go to the engineering data components. You can simply select your materials and click compare and then it will display all the relevant properties to your study and you can select it accordingly. Um, if you ever find that the materials that you require are not listed here, you can make use of the grants on materials data for simulation which is an add-on to all your um, flagship products. So the Granta MDS um, license will take data from your comprehensive Granta material databases. Um, they have approximately 750 material data sheets that are very comprehensive and complete. And the nice thing is that this data is simulation ready. So you don't need to make any adjustments or um, you know, map it into a graph or anything. So you can simply just import, um, oh, you don't actually need to import, you can access it directly from Mechanical, it's in. It's embedded there. So you can access it in the same way as you would. Um, this slide will quickly just show you within your Mechanical application 
how easy it is to select your grants and materials data for simulation library. You can search for your applicable material and just select the plus um, icon there and it will be added to your project as simple as that. Okay. If you then want to go a step further, there's also a standalone tool that ANSYS is offering. Um, I'm not sure if everyone is aware of this. It's called Granta Selector. So Granta Selector feeds mainly from the two core material databases called Material Universe and Jam. So essentially they have over, oh, they have thousands and thousands of material data sheets that are all complete and comprehensive. Um, eliminating unnecessary need to look for material data from other sources and getting contradictory information. So this is absolutely powerful. Um, unfortunately, the one thing is the advanced material data bundles you'll have to procure separately as this is manufacturer spec specifications. So if you are interested in some of these material bundles specifically, then you can have that as an add-on. If not, you can still use these um, databases to find similar grades or similar materials. Uh, sometimes it's a bit confusing when you work with all the different material grades all over the world and you're not exactly sure uh, which ones are equivalent. This will help you in that sense to find equivalent materials for your study. Um, this quick video on this slide, I just want to demonstrate quickly how from Workbench you can use a grant or selector component to import to your engineering data components. You can use some tools like I'm doing here. Um, I'm using limit searches and charts tools to put constraints on the materials that I'm trying to find. So in this case, I wanted to find a stainless alloy that is um, not susceptible to SEC, um, has a a yield strength of a given value and a price of only 22 rand per kilogram. And then from that, you can simply export this material data to mechanical directly or to Workbench. Um, you can just select export to, and you can also export to other CAD packages as well. So this is very powerful um, tools to make, to help you make sense of all the data that is contained within Granta and then using very reliable material data within your mechanical simulation um, to make sure that those are actually a good representation of what you will see in reality. Okay, so that is it from my side. I will be handing over to JC now, who will be taking us from composites all the way down to explicit dynamics. Okay, JC, are you ready for us? Uh, yes, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes, yes, I'm ready to go. Um, just wanted to activate my camera for a bit so that you can put a face to the name. Yeah, so um, thank you very much for that, John. Me, that was very well done. Um, let me share my screen and then we can get going. Can you just give me an indication if if you can see my screen now? Yes. yes. yes okay. Perfect. Yeah, just making sure with all these Teams updates nowadays, you you have to be super careful. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Um, so yeah, thanks for that, John. Um, I'm gonna be moving on directly from the materials into the composites. And as you can see from the um Grantor selector, you have composite material data directly available. But that's not all. You also have things like your ASME um, material properties, and it's all as a function of temperature. So really, with that product and then going into composites, you have everything that you need. Then we might just have to look at some advanced workflows. So let's look at these new short fiber composite workflows. So using the material designer, you can actually go and create your material. And what this will do is it would actually give a homogenized material within the engineering data, and that can be used for the simulation. But included in all of this, you also have the new injection molding data system, which can take injection molding data from other software packages and bring that data in directly. And this is a very comprehensive workflow for your um, composite design. So for the injection molding data, you've got things like mold flow, 
um, Moldex 3D, Sigmasoft, and stuff like that. I, I'm not too familiar with these packages, but what you can export from there for your composite design is your fiber orientation tensors, your initial stress, if you would like to, and your fiber volume fraction. Then you can also do basic manipulations such as rigid transformations and so on. But this is quite nice. I mean, it takes everything from the material design level all the way through to your um, static structural analysis. Then they've also made some advancements to the composite pure simulation. So now what they do is they fully support um, all thermoplastics. Well, not all thermoplastics, but thermoplastics are fully supported. And there's also the new compensated surface exporter. So you can actually export a compensated surface that is um, basically takes into account the curing process, and that can be exported as an STL or point cloud to be used in your other analyses programs. Then onto meshing. So just an overview for meshing. Um, if you do use your batch connections or your mesh-based connections, what they've actually done now is the global options that were previously present have gone into a connection control branch. So it's just more of an admin type of thing. So all of the same settings are still there. They're just located in a different area now. Then we also have um, enhancements to the repair topology. So now for um, hole fill, if you would like to fill a hole, you can also select an edge to scope it to. And then something else that's quite nice, and you could just see by the mesh over here how, how significant this improvement is, is for the um, hole fill. It also supports um, the edge scoping and the repair short edges options. So for those short edges, you don't have to account for that directly within the mesh. So this gives us less elements and makes it a lot more computationally efficient. Then we're going to look at one of my favorite features, without a doubt, and this is the mesh freeze and unfreeze option. So what you can do now is you can actually generate a mesh on individual parts, and then in the geometry, you can go and freeze the mesh on those parts. So this is really great, especially if you're changing your global controls and stuff like that, or we all have had those times where we've made a small adjustment to the mesh in our global settings, and we had to remesh everything now, hopefully, we can eliminate a lot of this repetitive mistakes that we make in the past because it can be really frustrating when you get perfect mesh and something small goes and messes everything up. Then onto the analysis. So um, for the analysis, we're going to look at some of the enhancements to element technology. So this is relevant for um, the coupled physics enhancements for elements. So they now have the um, enthalpy material property that you can enable for phase change um, types of simulations. And what they've also done is for the thermal solid elements, the new types of elements, which I'll discuss a little bit later, they've also done a performance tune-up. So it's about 15% um, better, more efficient in your solving. They've also made some uh, um, additional enhancements to the axisymmetric modeling for your um, coupled field plane solid elements, if you use that, and then they've got damping and kinetic element energies, which can be used for your piezoelectric analysis. Then for the SMART, which is your separating, morphing, adapting, remeshing technology. So this is usually used for our crack simulations. So what they've done is they've made this far more efficient now. On the left-hand side, you could see what the previous um, smart remeshing used to look like. So you could see we've got an excessive amount of elements along that crack growth path over there. So what they've done is they've made it a lot more efficient by allowing a better remeshing on the right-hand side. And you could see that you are getting a much faster um, simulation about three times in this case. Another great feature that they've included now is you can actually support contact within the smart crack growth simulation. So previously, it, it would just have to be on your homogenous body, and there wasn't really contact you could use bonded. But now what they've done is they've actually included a contact. So you can see as the crack is growing over here, the contact is still maintained, and that's actually where the load transfer is taking place. So that is really nice, and it's more realistic for um, the applications we would like to simulate. 
then nonlinear adaptivity. So just an overview for our nonlinear adaptivity. Um, they are changing the element type. There's also a support for load and boundary conditions now. So previously you could not apply a nonlinear adaptivity on a load or boundary condition. There's also a tire analysis guide if you do use that type of technology. And then some of the enhancements, you can now use this with your solid 285, which are your pure displacement formulations. And then there's also additional geometric stiffness for your MPC rigid beams to improve the eigenvalue predictions, which they were also speaking about in the PCG model earlier, uh, solver. So now just, a, just an overview of these. So for small deformation, there's only a refinement for accuracy. So you can see how that works over here. Then for large deformation with contact, so when you're sort of pressing something in, like you can see over there, that's what it looks like, the mesh adaptivity. Then large deformation with self-contact, and then something that was previously a nightmare where you had um, mesh adaptivity and nonlinear adaptivity coming into contact with one another, that could be quite a mesh nightmare. So now you could see just from this demonstration of yeah, these bodies are actually coming into contact with one another and the mesh is being adapted at the same time. And it's just remarkable to see that you can actually simulate something like that. Okay, so. Okay, then for your coupled physics analysis. So the most important thing to look at over here is they are just replacing the old um, element types. So these are going to become legacy thermal elements and they're replacing these with all of your prefix two. So you've got your solid 278 to solid 279 um, and then your plane elements, which is your plane 292 and plane 293. So they have to also make these adjustments because the additive manufacturing um, simulations, they're also going to start looking at implementing this type of thing to speed up the simulation. So that's that's the key thing is these are going to become the new types of thermal elements. Then on contact, so now for the contact, they've got the projected 3D line to surface contact. So what this actually does is it gives us a much smoother contact and better contact profile when we have a line to surface contact in a model. So you can think of things like um, cables and um, beams and all these types of things. So previously, this could be quite a bit of a pain, as you can see, where it misses the contact entirely on the bottom left hand side of here. Um, now with the enhancements, we should be able to pick up these profiles. So just a demonstration of a seven strand element type. This is a three point bending test that they did. And you could see that they've got seven strands on the inside over there and they're bending this cable over here and it is giving a fairly smooth um, contact profile. So this is converging very nicely. And you can see as it zooms in over there, all of these elements are still staying together. So that's that's quite a nice feature that they've included. Then um, contact damping. So when you have models that are only hold, held together with contact, then sometimes it can be a little bit of a mission to get it to converge because you have to adjust um, the interfaces and make sure that it's touching one another from the beginning. So now by adding some damping to the model, we improve our convergence and we don't have to worry too much about the contact only um, models where everything's held together with contact. As you can see, it works fairly well with that spring system on the bottom left hand side there. And we are getting much faster convergence, about 20 iterations less. And if you have a large model, that, that can be a significant time saved. Then just a couple of additional um, initial interface treatments that they've included. So previously you had your adjust to touch, your add offset um, with ramped or no ramp specs. Now what they've gone and included is offset only with no ramping, offset only with ramped effects, offset only, and you can ignore the initial status and offset only ignore initial status and no ramping. So it's the ramping and no ramping effects that we're looking at over there. So that's quite nice. Often you'd initialize your model and it doesn't want to converge because you don't have contact at the beginning. Now you can go and adjust and say that offset only and there's no ramping and you could solve your model like that. 
Then for the constraints, they've improved the surface based constraints. So this is in particular uh, interesting to the MPC types of elements. So when you're using um, bolts for bolt pretension or other types of MPC elements previously, if it undergot, if it underwent a large rotation or large deformation, then you would have some loss of accuracy over there and it would not pre preserve the um, stress profile. Now that is not the case anymore. So that is accounted for within the solver and it includes the stress, the stress stiffening. And on the improvements, you can also see that we are saving a lot of time. So we're saving about 50% and 68% of our simulation time with these MPC contacts, which can be quite expensive on larger models. Then for the um, force distributed uh, surface constraint, uh, we just get a far better convergence rate. So over here, you can see we're using some RBE3 type elements, bolts and springs. So these are all your MPC type uh, contact and MPC type uh, constraints. And you can see that we are improving our performance. So this would obviously also scale depending on what it is we are using. Then just on the result side, for the results, we have um, new display preferences. So previously, you could only show your ISO and CAPS ISO surfaces and section planes for the um, initial geometry. Now what you can do is you can show this for the final deformed geometry. You'll have to go and enable it. And graphically, what this looks like is you can now see we can actually go and cap and create ISO surfaces on that deformed geometry over there. Then another thing that I like, especially if you're using um, linear stresses or anything like that, and you just need to um, snap to your elements or snap to the centroid of a element face. With the probe tool now, if you enable the snapping option, it will actually just go to the closest node or mid side node or to the central face of the element. So that's just nice. It just gives you a little bit more control over where you are selecting and you can eliminate some of those interpolation errors when selecting um, probes within regions that aren't very, the mesh isn't very well defined. And then also for the result uh, geometry. So they've just gone and improved the compression of these results geometries. So you can actually get a 10x reduction in the file sizes for this. Then one of my favorite topics is the mechanical scripting and recording. So now there is a recording option in the API for the scripting. So the scripting is done with Python, but now you can go and record the operations that you do graphically and it will create a script for you um, in the uh, module. It will create a script snippet and you can go and manipulate this afterwards. You can get everything set up using the record feature and then go and change it a little bit later on. So that's really nice to have. And that is also supported for your graphics options. So if you go and make a series of images or videos of a certain design, what you can do is you can record the script and go to set locations and take snapshots of your results or group, record an animation, and you can rerun the same script in another simulation that's very similar. If you'd like to compare the results and it will go and apply those um, uh, post-processing types of scripts for you. Then uh, they've also included a script debugger and um, help extension in this. So this is, if you would like to get started on this, there is that option to go and look at debugging your code. So that's an important part of actually just scripting in general. Then for structural optimization, they've done a lot of work on the structural optimization, and this leads into obviously our additive manufacturing. So there's new capabilities that have been added. So you can now have joints within a um, structural optimization geometry. There's new user-defined criterion and different normalization and combined objectives that you can use. So if you put a joint in previously, you could not do a structural optimization or topology optimization with it. Um, now you can do that. And the workflow to actually get out your optimized geometry has been improved. So what they've done is they've included a more robust auto skin feature. So you'll do your topology optimization and take the STL back into space claim and do an auto skin 
um, operation. And what that does is it actually smooths out the geometry and gives us that nice, um, what you can see on the bottom left hand side there, that nice geometry that we can use for our further simulations, our validation simulations. Then there is the shape optimization. So what this does is instead of actually deleting elements, you can move the nodes on elements to give a more robust optimization uh, work procedure. So you'll still have the same number of elements, but they'll all be moved around. So that's nice where the SIMP technology failed and the elements were deleted. You can now use the um, node move in order to do the shape optimization. And they've also gone and included a stress criterion. So you can just see over here how the results change when you include the stress criterion. And on the right hand side, we've got our shape optimization. So um, that's not really too applicable. You don't really have two options there. That one's got the stress included. But you can see we can get far more robust uh, designs that we can then go and implement in a additive simulation. So that takes us on to the additive manufacturing, so our workbench additive. So they've done a lot of um, improvements in this as well. They, they're working with a lot of industry partners to use their build files for these types of simulations and to create a more reliable method of solving these additive manufacturing um, problems and simulating them far more accurately. So additive prep, this allows us to optimize for our printing simulation. Then additive print gives us a realistic um, thermal um, simulation. And this is based off of the exact machine that you have. So you put your build codes in and they increase in the support of these build files. And you put your build files in directly and it takes into account what the machine was built to do. Then additive science, so this ties back into accurately modeling our materials. So they're improving that. And then workbench additive, they improve in the wizard. So it's much um, more easy for you to actually go and implement your workbench additive simulation without knowing any type of APDL coding. You just use the wizard and it will do that for you. Then onto explicit dynamics. So uh, I don't know if anyone uses a Linux system out there, but OpenMPI is now also um, available on Linux systems for explicit simulations. Then something that Ansys has also really been pushing is the smooth particle hydrodynamics model. So you actually simulate particles within an explicit model and they've gone and improved this. So now it makes our simulations far more efficient because you can use element birth or death in order to control when these are active and they are also allowing you to use a box setup to activate or deactivate these SPH particles. Then for Workbench Alistina, they've now also included the later solver, the 11.2 solver, so you can get more information over there. And what they've also done is they've just improved the quality of life within Mechanical itself or within Workbench. So you can now see a progress bar as you run your simulation and you can take um, st statistics out of your simulation. So runtime, um, the performance of the memory used and everything like that directly from Mechanical. So that's a nice to have. Another thing that you can also include is the stress and deformation monitors. So as the simulation is progressing, these will be available so you can actually see visually what is happening with your LS Dyna simulation. The solve process settings are also controlled directly now from the mechanical interface. So previously that would have had to be in your um, K files. Um, now that isn't a, um, a need anymore. You can specify that graphically within mechanical. Then electronics reliability, so that's the Sherlock product. So now there is um, full workbench integration. So this is the first release where Sherlock is fully integrated within workbench. This automates a lot of our post-processing and transferring data from the input to the output of this um, reliability workflow. So that's quite nice and um, this can then be linked to your modal, harmonic, and mechanical shock analysis type. So that's that's the significance of bringing it into Workbench. Then um, just on the hydrodynamics, so 
You can also monitor your maneuvering forces. So previously this wasn't available. You can actually go and include the maneuvering forces um, from the properties and you can plot them in relation to the input data. They've also improved the results. So you can now look at the specif specific results directly within Aqua. So you can specify frequencies and um, go and look at your results for different frequencies that are above whatever it is that you specified to your results of interest. And then a new tool is the new wave spectra. So this is also in Aqua and this just displays the frequency statistics of the waves. Then onto multibody dynamics. So this is for motion. So ANSYS motion is now integrated into mechanical. You can do everything directly from the mechanical interface for motion. Um, there's also extended pro post-processing um, abilities with API. So this is if you are a motion user. Then what they've also gone and done is they've included some um, really interesting types of applications. So a planetary gear setup. You can actually go and use a tool to set up this kind of a model directly in mechanical using the motion software. Then also for ANSYS motion, um, if you're simulating sort of cables and links types of elements, they have a built-in analysis tool directly into um, Workbench. So you can go and look at the response of this type of system directly from mechanical. And then uh, the last thing is just, they've also included soil interaction. So this is of significance if you need to consider um, soil properties, as you can see, that's some sort of uh, tank belt that's moving along soil. So this is also included in um, ANSYS motion now. And that is it from the 300 plus slides that we went and cherry picked for you. So I hope that you, you found that interesting. Um, sorry, there's just too much to actually cover in one go. And I also want to keep to the time so that you guys can get back to, to work if you're done with your lunch break now. But yeah, thank you.